This will be the last of our gizmo activities. This activity is going to introduce you to the concept of microevolution. Microevolution happens when a species changes small characteristics over time. In the example of the peppered moths, the changes were influenced by humans. During the Industrial Revolution, the smokestacks of the factories put up a lot of soot. And what had happened was that the forests around Britain and in London, or initially they were light-colored trees, they got covered in this dark soot. And what people noticed was that the coloration of the moths tended to change. So what you're looking at here are pictures of the light-colored and dark-colored variations of the peppered moths. And these moths existed in certain amounts already. So the dark coloring here, you can see in this third picture here, was a variation. Most of the moths were white because if you take a look at the second picture here that I'm indicating, the trees were light colored. And so the moth would blend in on light colors, whereas the dark colored moths would tend to stick out. As the Industrial Revolution went on, the soot gathered up onto the trees, it got to be very dirty, and the trees turned dark colored. Now if you think about this, you're a bird and you're trying to find moths to eat, you're going to want to get the moths you can easiest see. And so what happens is, is the trees turned dark, now the dark colored moths had a, an advantage. The birds could see the light colored moths more easily as indicated by this picture down here where you got the dark background. And so the white moths would get eaten. Well, what this means is the white moths can't pass on their genes for the light coloration. The dark moths are going to survive. They're going to have the genes for the dark coloration. And they're going to pass those on. And so what's going to happen is the percentage of black moths is going to increase and the percentage of white moths will not. As time went on, laws were passed to clean up and have filters on smokestacks. And when that happened, then the dark colored trees started changing back to light color. And what happened? Well, what happened again was you go back to the second picture here. Now the white colored moths have an advantage. Birds couldn't see them as easily. And so the black moths get attacked and eaten. Now what's happening here is that the environment is changing and the idea of genes and variation are important for a species survival, not an individual, but a species. Having lots of variation, in this case, white and dark coloration, means that you can adapt to your environment and the species can survive if some kind of change happens. Now this is a small change. So your activity is going to simulate this. That's kind of a background history of the, the peppered moths, which you'll get more in your notes as we go through it later in the week. The gizmo that you're going to be doing. So your gizmo looks a lot like this and you've got a little play area here. you got a data area. Down here you've got years one, two, three, four, and five. So you're going to go through different years. Notice the next tree button. If you take a look at your handout, the gizmo warm up, and there's going to be some questions that I just talked about here. The term morph means what type? The white or dark color. So which morph do you think is easier to be seen on a dark tree trunk? So you can finish up those questions. So you can do those questions. The warm up, you're just gonna kind of play around with it and see how this works. And I kind of wanted to demo this for you. Let's bring up our gizmo. If you click on play, it's gonna do a little countdown here. And your job as the bird is to find as many moths. I don't see any here, so I'm gonna to go to the next tree. And there's two white ones. Uh, by the way, I got the dark trees turned on. I'm gonna to go to the next year, I'm gonna get these. And you can see the counts over here on the right are changing. Next tree, here's some. And you wanna eat as many as possible. Now there's probably dark moths in here, but I can't see them very well. So in that particular year, uh, I ate six of the light colored moths. I didn't see any of the dark colored moths yet. Uh, when you're ready to go to the next year, you click continue. I wanna show you the light colored tree. So let's go over to the light colored trees and let's Repeat this, notice we're starting with 20 dark and light, and I wanna find as many of these moths to eat. So I can't see any there, so I go to the next tree. Oh, and there's a light colored moth, there's a light colored moth. So I can see the light colored moths better than the dark ones. But if I wanna eat as much as I can, I wanna attack these dark colored moths. Here's a couple of light colored moths. Don't see anything there, dark. So I just keep on going to next tree, next tree until it's over. So on that one, I was able to eat eight dark colored moths and four of the light colored moths. And then you notice that your gizmo stats over here change. We started at year one with 2020, and there's now 16 light colored moths and 12 of the dark colored moths. It's because the dark colors have a disadvantage. If you go here on the table, here's our table, and you can go here on the graph, and you can see our graph here. They're both 50-50, and now the dark moths percent of the population are changing okay uh, so on the light trees we got the light trees being changed here All right, so if I want to go to year two I just click continue and I click click play to do year two and you do the same thing you want to eat as many of the moths as you can so I don't see anything there there's a light colored moth there's a light colored moth there's a dark go to tree to tree 
You want to eat as much as you can. And so you keep on clicking. There's a light colored moth. And what I want to do is find these dark colored moths because they stick out more easy. Because that means I can eat more. Year's over. So I ate eight dark and three light. Go to the table. Eh, the table doesn't mean much to me. If I go to the total population, notice that the population of dark colored moths is increasing. I'm sorry, decreasing, going down. And the population of the white colored moths is going up because you're eating more. All right, back to the description. You can go to year two, etc. The lab is going to have you go through and you're going to do light trees and dark trees. And you're going to try to eat as many moths as you possibly can. So the warm up is pretty easy. I hope you know how to operate that. You just go to tree to tree. Activity A is you're going to do the light trees, make a prediction what's going to happen to the populations of moths, and you're going to write down, you know, experimentally, year zero is before you start, so you're going to type in 20, so you've got 20 and 20, and that's the data that will show up at the end of year one, what are you going to have? Well, you type in whatever you got, so, I mean, I would guess that the dark moths are going to go down, so maybe the dark moths are 15, uh, maybe the light moths are 19. Uh, then you got activity B where you go to the dark trees and you do the same basic experiment. And what you're doing here is you're kind of mimicking what happens in a population if something changes. If you have any questions, let me know. Contact me through Teams. Thank you.